Right. So today's topic is 80211 retries. Um, you know, we got this topic came from a previous webinar where I started talking about retries and I had to stop myself and say, this could be an entire webinar on its own. So I'm not going to go too far down this rabbit hole. And uh, you know what? A lot of our audience said, please do that webinar. So you asked for it and you're going to get it today. Um, uh, and if you don't know about me, my name is Jim Vada. I'm the Chief Wireless Officer here. Uh, I'm a wireless network engineer with about a decade of experience in enterprise Wi-Fi. Um, and so let's just jump right into the topic of 802.11 retries. So what is a retry, right? Let's go back to the basics. Um, you know, the way this is going to be uh, uh, constructed, we're going to really kind of nail the basics and talk some best practices. And then I'm going to get into the protocol a little bit and some packet captures and show you uh, the details around some of these things. Um, so what's, an, what's a retry? Well, quite simply, it's a wireless frame that's retransmitted because the receiver did not acknowledge it. And that's it a frame that had to be re retransmitted uh, because the transmitter didn't get an acknowledgement from the receiver. Now in Wi-Fi, this only applies to unicast frames. We don't acknowledge multicast or broadcast frames, uh, just frames with a single destination. And it's a really important part of EDCF, the Enhanced Distributed Coordination Function uh, that really governs channel access for Wi-Fi. This is, you know, like a lot of topics in Wi-Fi, this, you, you can start talking about retries and spider into the whole, the entire protocol eventually and proper design and uh, best practices. And uh, you, you gotta, you know, eventually you're, you're boiling the ocean. So, Today, I'm going to do my best to really focus in just on retries and how they work and uh, just provide some context where necessary. So here's a simple look at the way uh, a retry happens over time. We've got client one, and it's trying to send a frame to the access point. So that frame there is labeled as a PPDU. And, uh, that's just a fancy way of, of saying an 802.11 frame. Uh, in, the, in the standard, you'll see that language, and it stands for PLCP Protocol Data Unit. So it's an acronym within an acronym, of course. But it's just, a, uh, it's, you can think of it as a complete 802.11 frame with the preamble, the headers, and the data payload. It's the in, entire string of bits that gets transmitted out. So quite simply, the client's trying to send this frame to an access point. It contends for the medium, sends the frame, and it doesn't get an acknowledgement back. So it has to contend again, send the frame again, this exact same frame, no acknowledgement. And by the third try, it gets that acknowledgement frame back from the AP, the ACK frame. And now it knows the AP receive the frame and it can move on to sending its next frame. So it's, um, you know, some important context here, if we think about the OSI model, is that this is a layer two uh, protocol, right? So if we think about the whole stack, what we're doing at layer two has an effect on layer three packet loss. This frame, even though it was, retried twice, we had some frame loss, the uh, data payload is, is the same between all three frames. It's that IP packet. And because that payload eventually made it across the, the medium, we don't have any packet loss at layer three. So it's important to think about the interaction between the layers and uh, the um, uh, the way that uh, ensures that the upper layer data eventually makes it across, even if there are issues uh, in, the, in the bottom layers. 
So why do we even need retries? Um, let's, here we go. Uh, this all stems from the fact that the RF channel that our access point and clients are operating on is a half duplex medium. And that means only one station on the channel can transmit at a time. And in another important um, part of being half duplex is that that transmitting station can't also uh, receive at the same time. It can't listen to the channel while it's transmitting. This is actually uh, the exact same channel access um, concept that walkie talkies or two-way radios use. Um, if you've ever played with these, you know, you've, you've had the experience where you hold the, the um, radio up to your mouth, you, you hold down that transmit button, the light turns red and you talk and then you let go. And then what happened? Well, you can't hear the RF. You don't know that the radio actually did anything, actually transmitted anything. And you can't hear your voice coming out of the speaker on the other end because that other radio is too far away. So in order to understand that your message was received, uh, the receiving radio, the person that's operating that will send a, a little 10-4 or a copy back to you to let you know, yep, I heard you. Uh, I, it was loud enough that I could make out the, the words you were saying. and uh, and now we can continue our conversation. That's the same kind of acknowledgement that's built into Wi-Fi for, for the same reasons. So we need those acknowledgements. That's the only way the transmitter knows that its um, messages are, are getting across the wireless medium. And what we do in Wi-Fi is if we don't receive that acknowledgement, we'll just retry, 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 retry many times. Uh, and then eventually, uh, we'll just give up. We'll drop the frame, move on to the next one, and hopefully, you know, uh, whatever conditions are causing retries will, will um, subside and we'll be able to start getting frames across the medium. So here's an example of a, an issue that could cause a retry. This is a collision. We've got two clients trying to transmit data frames to an access point. And client number one starts, it, it wins contention and starts transmitting. And while it's transmitting, client number two starts transmitting its frame at the same time. And that's called a collision. Uh, and you can imagine back to the, the two-way radio um, analogy, um, if if two people are transmitting on the same channel with those radios, uh, the channel is just a garbled mess. Nobody can make out what anybody's saying. Same thing's happening here. We've got a collision. The transmitter, the, the two transmitters are interfering with, with, with each other. And the AP can't make sense of either of the transmissions. So what happens? We have contention again. And if client one wins the channel again, it can send its, um, its PPDU. And, and this time, because there wasn't a collision, it gets an acknowledgement back. So this is just one example of um, a, a, a reason that a retries happen. Um, one of the issues that leads to collisions is called the hidden node problem, which is worth, worth a Google and, and it's definitely something that you want to uh, do your best to design uh, so hidden node issues are um, uncommon, but they are a part of, uh, of most wireless uh, communications, something we have to deal with. So let's add another layer, layer of detail to this um, and, and understand this uh, more at the protocol level. There's a couple of things that happen when retries happen. One, the contention window doubles in size for every retry, um, all the way up to a maximum of 1,024 slot times. 
And this is the best effort contention window. There's different um, uh, window sizes for the different um, QoS queues, but we'll just talk about best effort. So our first contention window has uh, 16 possible values. And then if we have to retry, it doubles to 32, and then 64, and then so on. It gets longer and longer and longer um, because something's going wrong. The station's frames aren't getting acknowledged. In this case, the client's frames aren't getting acknowledged. So Wi-Fi being such a polite protocol where we're trying our best to share the channel um, uh, with other users, we double that contention window each time to give whoever else is using the channel potentially uh, a chance to, to use it and give us a longer time to detect that other user and kind of sync up and know what's going on. So um, the contention window, window doubles. And the other thing that happens is the data rate or MCS rate um, the station uses starts dropping. So um, uh, it, because uh, a higher data rate requires more signal to noise ratio, uh, the client might start to believe that channel conditions have degraded. We maybe not don't have the SNR we need. That's why my frames aren't getting acknowledged. And I'm going to shift down to lower and lower rates that don't have um, the same SNR requirements. So um, we get two things, right? We get the um, uh, we get the contention window doubling, and we get the um, MCS shifting down, um, and all this chews up airtime. It's not just a um, uh, the fact that we're sending the same frame over and over again, which is inefficient, but it's also that we're sending it in a slower and slower way um, that eats up airtime. So we want to, uh, you know, we want to uh, limit and and keep our retry rates as low as possible, uh, but we can't eliminate them. Retries are a normal part of a healthy Wi-Fi network. Uh, it's just a, a fact of life for Wi-Fi. Um, we just want to keep them low. Uh, so some of the causes, without getting into too too deep a dive in 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 these, poor SNR. You know we don't have enough signal to noise ratio to support the MCS rate that we're transmitting at um, uh, because we're too far away from the AP. Um, it's a noisy environment. Uh, we've made a bad um, selection for the MCS rate we're trying to use. Um, number of reasons for that, of course. Collisions, like we saw in the previous example. Hidden nodes, or uh, for whatever reason, we have clients transmitting at the same time, clients or APs transmitting at the same time, um, causing you know garbled, uh, uh, corrupted uh, frames, and then interference. So uh, other wireless protocols or um, other RF energy uh, from, from other sources uh, on the channel at the same time we're trying to transmit, um, which, you know, leads to a source of, uh, of poor SNR, um, are definitely going to cause retries. And we usually think about retries in terms of the rate of retries. A single retried frame is no big deal. We just kind of want to know how often they're occurring and uh, if that meets our, our requirements. So, we, you know, we measure retry rates and we want to keep them as low as possible. Uh, because like we saw, high retry rates, you know, those indicate uh, that there's probably RF problems going on and we want to uh, be able to uh, uh, you know limit RF problems as much as possible to get the best performance from our Wi-Fi network and so the best thing we can do is implement a very good Wi-Fi design 
that will help minimize retries significantly. But it's also good to understand that retry rates are very dynamic. And uh, we'll look at an example here in a second. But um, like a lot of things in Wi-Fi, you know, the, the right retry rate is a moving target. It really depends on the use cases and um, application requirements that the Wi-Fi network needs to support. Uh, but voice is the most demanding. In, in general, we want to keep retry rates below 10% for voice. Uh, uh, voice over Wi-Fi is, you know, that's the application that, that has the strictest packet loss latency and jitter requirements. And retry, you know, high retry environments are bad for all three of those metrics. Other applications can tolerate a lot of retries. If I'm just sending emails, I could have you know retry rates through the roof, and I'd probably get my email across and wouldn't you know notice too big of a difference. Uh, but with the real-time applications we're using today, that are so latency sensitive, um, keeping retries uh, minimized is important. So one of the things we do with Safari is we can monitor retry rates um, over time. And this is an example of that showing the differing retry rates for an access point uh, in the 2.4 gigahertz band, which is that orange line, uh, and the five gigahertz band, which is that yellow line. And of course, you can see a very big difference in retry rates between the two bands um, with some pretty ugly periods for 2.4 gigahertz where retry rates the retry rates, you know, spike to 100%. And, um, you know, this is actually, uh, it's very common to see a, a difference between the bands where five gigahertz has a significantly lower retry rate. Which brings us to how do we keep them low? How do we lower our retries? And the first thing we can do uh, if, if we need to keep retries as low as possible for an application like voice, is just use five gigahertz, not 2.4 gigahertz. Five gigahertz um, has fewer uh, sources of interference. It um, has a lot more spectrum available, so it's far less crowded, uh, which means there's less contention, which means um, you know it's not as noisy. Um, and and so um, it's also subject to far less interference from uh, non-Wi-Fi protocols like Bluetooth. Um, so five gigahertz is definitely the way to go for the lowest uh, to achieve the lowest retry rates possible. We want to reduce contention as much as possible. That's um, going to help us. Uh, limit collisions and um, and limit the effect of hidden node issues. So um, one way to do that, to think about that, is is uh, to keep the clients per AP as low as possible by um, using uh, uh, instead of using per perhaps um, wider channels and fewer APs use more APs and smaller channel widths um, to reduce uh, the amount of contention going on. We need to reduce or eliminate co-channel interference. That's a big source of retries um, to, again, an issue with contention, but it, it can turn into a, an issue with collisions if, um, if frames are, uh, you know, are not being, are, you know, just the right, uh, distance away. Search and destroy non-Wi-Fi interferers. Um, I'm, a, I'm an advocate for finding this, those sources of non-Wi-Fi interference that are particularly disruptive, and, and option one should be removing them. Uh, that's not always possible, but I, I think that's a better, uh, a better uh, course of action than trying to channel plan around it or letting your RRM 
try and try to move your APs away from uh, channels that are experiencing interference. The problem with that approach, and it might be the best you can do, um, but the problems there are, well, there's just not a lot of spectrum. There's nowhere to go. Um, particularly in 2.4 gigahertz, there's nowhere to go. There's only three channels we can use, and we're already using them, and we've already accepting a lot of CCI to use the band. But also in five gigahertz, we're probably using the entire five gigahertz band in an enterprise Wi-Fi network. So there's nowhere to go there either that's not going to result in code channel interference. And uh, from my experience, some of the sources of non-Wi-Fi interference in five gigahertz, they can span a lot of spectrum like all of uni one or all of uni three. And we just don't want to give up a 80 megahertz ch uh, chunk of, of spectrum. Um, so go find those things and try to neutralize them if you can. Um, so one of the things that's interesting about retries is there's also client side issues as well that um, lead to retries like roaming. So a sticky client that doesn't roam well is going to end up with really poor SNR. It's going to be out on the edge of a client's or an AP's coverage cell, uh, which might lead to it causing CCI on its own. And that's going to lead to high retries. So as much as possible, um, deploy uh, uh, clients that roam well, and if they have configuration options that can affect their roaming performance, tune those for your network. So design for roaming, right? Uh, we can do some things on the infrastructure side. We can, we can um, there's you know, design, ways in the design to make sure that when clients are roaming, when we think about the physical path clients will take through the environment, we can put our APs in places so that the roaming is graceful. In other words, as the client uh, needs to discover that next day access point, it's there, right? You know, well in advance of the, the point where it's actually going to roam. If a client has to panic roam, which is it doesn't see that next access point until it absolutely needs to uh, discover it in Rome. Um, it's we're going to have uh, issues with retries, among other things, um, when that occurs. So design for graceful roaming, for sure. All right, so let's dig a little bit deeper into the protocol and look at some packet captures. Um, uh, here's here's uh, what. Um, Here's a, a single frame um, acknowledgement packet capture. Looking at Wireshark here, I've got some uh, custom columns set up. I'm also using the, the MetaGeek uh, coloring rules for Wireshark. Shout out to MetaGeek for those. You can find them. If you Google that, you'll find them. Makes it really easy to kind of visualize what's going on. Uh, but this is kind of what we expect to see with our without any frame aggregation. If we look at this info column, we see a data frame followed immediately by an acknowledgement, data frame, acknowledgement, data frame, acknowledgement, and so on. And um, something else to look at here is the sequence number. Um, that's from the, the MAC header of the, of the data frame. And we see that incrementing by one, indicating that these are new frames. It's just one after another, no retries. And uh, there you go. But if we do have retries, we'll have something that looks like this, um, where um, this client's trying to, to send uh, a frame to the AP and it's not getting acknowledged. And there's a couple ways I can tell that these frames are being retried. First, if I look over at this info column, there's a capital R within the flags. That's indicating that the retry bit is set um, on these frames. And the other thing I look at is the sequence number. Sequence number is staying um, 
the same at saying constant at 2789. This is just the same framing retried 12 times. And uh, what you'll notice is we never get an acknowledgement for, for this frame. This client's retried 12 times, then it dropped it, moved on to the next frame, sequence number 2790, retries that 12 times, and then drops it because it never gets acknowledged and moves on to uh, frame 2791. So all told, we've got 24 retries and um, two packets that got lost because the, the, the payload for uh, those frames never made it across the medium. And um, so we have two packets lost. And, uh, but, at, you know, again, think about the OSI model. If this is TCP, it, right, if these are, if the payload here is, uh, a TCP packet. Well, TCP has its own um, uh, retransmission uh, uh, method as well. So it's it's possible that the uh, application data actually is not uh, lost at all. Um, another thing I want to point out here is the data rate shifting. One of the columns I've enabled here is the data rate. And you can see this client started at 48 megabits per second with its first frame and then tries that a few times in the retries, then drops to 36, 24, and then 12, which is the lowest data rate supported on this network before it gives up. So that's the shifting that we talked about occurring when retries happen. And, and clients use their own algorithms for that, but in general, um, they start to shift downwards. Some are more aggressive than others in their rate shifting. And one of the things you'll notice too, uh, for the second frame, it's trying to get across the medium. And again, it goes right back up to 48 megabits per second and rate shifts all the way down to 12. And then it just sits, it stays at 12. So this, um, you know, this, the algorithm that governs this um, clients data rate shifting has you know seen enough with all these retries and it's decided we're gonna, just going to use this low data rate because I'm getting acknowledgments from this and and so we're going to go slow from now on. If we look at one of these retried frames, look at the uh, the contents. You'll see in the MAC header uh, that retry bit is set. All right, so just a single bit gets flipped to a one to indicate that the frame is being retransmitted. And another thing worth uh, noting here is there's the frame check sequence near the bottom there. That's the CRC, which is a calculation the receiver can use to verify that uh, the contents of the frame uh, are not corrupted. Because it's possible the receiver um, got the frame, but a few bits have been corrupted in transmission. And so it's really not uh, the frame that was intended to be received through calculating that CRC. Um, it can see if that's, uh, if it's, uh, it, it's an error uh, correction mechanism to check the integrity of the data. So that's how single frame retries work. Um, today, we see aggregated data frames uh, very often. And the way these work with uh, AMPDU is that we're um, grouping data frames together, transmitting them all one after another um, in a single transmission, um, an aggregated uh, transmission, and then uh, the receiver responds with a block acknowledgement frame and that single frame acknowledges um, uh, the whole sequence and tells the transmitter if any frames were missing or uh, uh, you know need to be retried. So this is what that looks like, where we have uh, two clients transmitting to an, an AP. Client number one is sending that AMP to you, and client number two, oopsie, we have a collision that disrupted. Uh, that third frame. So the AP still sends a block act, but the block act says, 
hey, I didn't get uh, PPDU three. We'll say the sequence number is three. So client number one then goes to uh, send another AMPDU, and it just starts again with the frame it needs to retry with sequence number three and goes on to uh, new data frames after that. And then the AP responds with a block hack uh, for that AM, AMPDU. So this is uh, very common because um, with ADA to 11 AC, one of the changes to the standard was that all data frames are now transmitted with the AMPDU um, uh, transmission scheme. So, so we see this very often. And so in Wireshark, this is uh, a very common traffic pattern to see. A lot, you know, a long string of, of data frames followed by a block hack and then continuing on. And we can tell these are unique data frames because the sequence number is uh, incrementing, but I can tell they were part of the same AMPDU uh, because the AMPDU ID is the same for all of these frames before the block act. That's in the radio tab header if you want to go find that, that field in, uh, in Wireshark. So um, retries here um, are, are, are just like we described. And um, you know they look the same. And if you inspect a block act, um, it will show what frames need to be retried. There's a, uh, a missing frame uh, field. So here it's indicating that missing frames, the sequence numbers were 3705, 3707, 3708. That comes from the first block act here. And the very next AMPDU starts with uh, those frames that need to be retried before it moves on to new frames. So that's how that works. I will touch on just uh, briefly what we're doing in OFDMA because there's a new acknowledgement uh, frame, the multi-station block act that happens with uplink OFDMA. So uplink OFDMA is when multiple clients are transmitting to the access point in the uplink direction, of course. It starts with a trigger frame that describes the resource unit allocation that all the clients are going to use. That comes from the AP. Then the clients send uh, uh, simultaneously uh, their frames within their resource units. And then the AP responds with the multi-station block act. This just takes block act, uh, the block act format kind of to the next level, whereas uh, the previous block act that we saw is only directed at a single uh, uh, transmitter. The multi-station block act goes to multiple transmitters. Um, so if you inspect this, you see uh, the per AID association ID um, acknowledgement happening uh, for multiple stations. And you'll see the missing frames uh, for each of those association IDs and that response from the AP. In the downlink direction, so when the AP is transmitting to multiple stations at once with OFDMA, um, this is actually quite a bit more efficient because uh, the AP doesn't need to start with a trigger frame. It just starts right away with OFDMA. Uh, the preamble um, has the important information for the clients to, to get ready for it. And then the clients um, respond with a block act inside the resource unit that the AP um, allocated to them for their downlink transmission. So there's a simultaneous block act coming from each of the clients that were part of the um, downlink OFDMA transmission, uh, which is pretty neat. Cool. So I think that that about covers it and we can move into some Q&A. Awesome. Well, Jim, you're getting the uh, the week off so you don't have to ask and answer your own questions. <laughs> so, so, uh, <laughs> awesome. So we'll take maybe, maybe three here because I know we're running a little close on time. So 
Um, Rob asks, what is the percentage of retries that's healthy? When should you be concerned? Yeah, good question, Rob. And uh, of course, the answer is it depends. But, uh, you know, uh, general rule of thumb for me is, is I want it to be less than 30%. Um, and, and of course, for voice, uh, less than 10%. So um, those, are, those are rules of thumb. And uh, it's sometimes, uh, you know, you, from vendor design guides, you'll get uh, uh, more precise numbers there too. All right. And then we kind of jump around. Thomas asks, would only drop a packet once it fails at the lowest configured data rate? There's, there isn't a, um, so good question. Uh, the way clients rate shift is proprietary, it's not dictated by the standard. So uh, it doesn't have to shift all the way down to the lowest data rate before it drops the packet. Um, it, it might uh, not, you know, get that low. A lot, most clients will, you can see that in, in uh, packet captures. Uh, but it doesn't have to. Um, but I would say that is the most common scenario. It'll drop the packet after it's shifted all the way down. All right. And then Olivier had two questions, so I'll pick one. Um, what are the repercussions of turning on RTS, CTS to reduce retry rates? Oh, good question. So RTS, CTS protection uh, is a great way to address hidden, the hidden node issue um, and to set the, the nav of, of, uh, of every station in the area um, because those are transmitted at very low data rates. So that should lead to a significant reduction in collisions, which leads to a reduction in retry rates. But we get some extra overhead from having to transmit those RTS-CTS frames for every TX op that we need. Um, so, um, you know, and and usually there's, uh, that's kind of done dynamically and AP might uh, start doing that once um, a certain uh, threshold of retries or um, uh, once a certain um, size of AMPDUs need to be transmitted. It might just kick in and start doing RTS, CTS. Uh, but the, the re re repercussion is we get a little bit more overhead um, uh, to get a lower uh, retry rate from that. 